Okay, so today we're going to be having a look at uh, photosynthesis and the structure of a leaf. Um, we're going to look at three things. We're going to describe why photosynthesis is important and what it is. We're going to look at the word equation for it. We're going to look at the different parts of a leaf and then we're going to think about why a leaf uh, is well adapted to its function, meaning why is it good at its job. So first thing we need to do is we need to think about, well, what is photosynthesis? What does photosynthesis do? What is it for? Uh, what you should be doing during this uh, video, uh, when I ask a question, you can pause it. You can see if you can answer the question. Once you've had a go at answering the question, you can then uh, unpause the video and see whether you got the question right. So what is photosynthesis? Photosynthesis is the process by which plants make their own food. They need to make their own food in order to help themselves grow. Um, so that's how they do it, is by the process of photosynthesis. Where does photosynthesis take place? Where does it happen? Photosynthesis happens in the leaves of a plant. It also happens in any of the other green bits that you might find in a plant. So the stem's got some green bits in it. So photosynthesis also takes place there. But the main bits where it takes place are the leaves of a plant. Plants need a few things to create their food. What are they? carbon dioxide, water, and they need some energy from the sun, some light energy coming in from the sun. What kind of food do plants make for themselves? They make glucose. Glucose is a carbohydrate, one of the uh, four food groups you need to know about. It's a simple carbohydrate. And what else is produced? There's one other thing that gets produced when uh, plants do photosynthesis. What is it? oxygen. Now uh, plants would generally speaking consider it to be a waste product. It's not something that they need, it's just something that they give off. It is then used by animals and also by plants in fact for respiration um, but it's in terms of photosynthesis it's a it's just a byproduct. It's something that they are not aiming to make. Okay so we need to look at the word equation for photosynthesis. We need to know how the uh, bits and pieces are put together into an equation using the words. So we need to first of all know what a word equation is. And what a word equation is, on the left-hand side, we put the things that are being put together to the things that we're reacting together. These are known as the reactants. Uh, we're gonna have an arrow in there, and the arrow is going to uh, show which direction the reaction happens, uh, which direction the chemical reaction occurs. Um, and above that arrow, we're gonna include the type of energy uh, that's being used. In this case, it'll be light energy. Uh, and then on the right hand side, we're going to put what is being created. So if we were to think about um, chips, let's think about chips. What might the word equation be if we were making chips? So what are we putting together? What type of energy are we using to create the chips? And uh, what is being created on the, on the far end? So let's have a look at that. The word equation would probably look something like this. Potatoes plus oil and salt, those are the reactants, those are the things that we put together. We then apply some heat energy when we put it in the, uh, in the fryer, and we end up with chips. Now, I always use an arrow in my equations, whether it's a word equation or a symbol equation. Whenever we're doing any kind of chemical reaction, we always use an arrow here. Now, the arrow, instead of an equal sign, tells us that the reaction is occurring in a particular direction. So we put together raw potatoes, oil and salt, and they become chips. So I always say the word become or becomes when I'm dealing with reactions like this. Um, this tells us that you can't take chips and turn them into raw potatoes, oil and salt. You can only do it in one direction. Raw potatoes, oil and salt become chips. We don't have chips becoming raw potatoes, oil and salt. So the direction of the arrow there is very important. That's why we don't use an equal sign. So the word equation for photosynthesis would look something like this. We need to think about what's being put together. So what is being put together? Carbon dioxide and water. So that's gonna go on our left-hand side there of the uh, word equation. And we need to think about what's being created. What's being created is glucose and oxygen. And the last thing we need to think about is what's the type of energy being used? It's energy from the sun, and specifically the energy from the sun that we're using is the light energy. So we're going to put that above the arrow there. Carbon dioxide plus water uh, will become glucose and oxygen using light energy. Right. Next step then, we need to have a look at the inside of a leaf to see what it looks like. So this diagram that I've got here 
is a sort of cutaway of a leaf. If you were to take a leaf and chop it and have a look down the thin end, it's a sort of cross section of what you would see there. Uh, on the right hand side, we've got um, uh, the sort of the mid rib down the center of a leaf. That's a thick bit down the center of the leaf and then going out to the sides of the leaf here. Let's break it down and have a bit of a look at it in simple terms. Um, so leaves are where most of the photosynthesis in a plant will take place and the raw materials that we need are what? Carbon dioxide and water. So we're going to have to get carbon dioxide and water into the leaf somehow. Let's concentrate first of all on the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is a gas that you find in the atmosphere uh, around us and it will get into the leaves through these little holes at the bottom. There's some little holes on the, di on the diagram there down at the bottom. These holes are called stomata and that's where the carbon dioxide can get into the leaf. Um, here's a diagram showing you some stomata. Um, they look like little mouths uh, which is uh, why they're called stomata. In fact, we'll talk about that in a second. So this was taken using a microscope. Um, stomata is the plural. Incidentally, stoma is the singular. So you would say, here are four stomata. There is one stoma, for instance. That's uh, the plural and the singular. And it means mouth in ancient Greek. And the reason it uh, means mouth, the reason we use that word is because it looks a bit like a mouth. And like a mouth, stomata can be either open or closed. So I've now put up a little diagram there showing you what it looks like when the stomata are closed. And the one on the top is what it looks like when they're open. So it's a hole on the bottom of the leaf that the plant can uh, open up or it can close. Um, so stomata are open or closed by these things called guard cells. And the guard cells are found on the sides of the uh, stomata. So you've got little holes and surrounding the holes are these two things called guard cells. Um, these bits here are the guard cells. So that lets the carbon dioxide diffuse in and lets it come into the leaf um, and in, up into the air spaces that we find inside the leaves. Uh, but we also need something to diffuse out. So we've got carbon dioxide coming in. That's one of the reactants, one of the things that we're putting together in photosynthesis. But we also have a gas being produced as a product of photosynthesis. Uh, so what is that gas? oxygen. The stomata will allow the oxygen to leave through the bottom of the leaf. So the air spaces make this part of the leaf very spongy uh, and so we call it the spongy layer. If you think about a sponge that you have at home for doing the dishes, uh, it's full of lots of little air spaces. This means that it can absorb a lot of water, a lot of fairy liquid and help you to clean up your dishes. The same kind of thing happens in a plant. We have these uh, this part of the leaf which we call the spongy layer, which has a lot of which has a lot of uh, air spaces inside it. This allows a lot of oxygen to get out and allows a lot of carbon dioxide to get in, um, and it gives a really large surface area. We've got these cells in there. We've got a lot of space around them. It means there's a lot of area for the gases to diffuse in and to diffuse out of the plant. Um, Carbon dioxide is needed for photosynthesis. We also need a liquid. The liquid that we need for photosynthesis is what? Water. And the water has to get into the leaf somehow as well. So it travels up from the roots. The water is taken in from the ground that the plant is planted in. Um, and it travels up from the roots through some tubes called xylem. That word is pronounced xylem. Sounds a bit like xylophone. It's got the same three letters on the front as xylophone does. And you can think of them as being the sort of veins of the plant. So they run up from the uh, roots all the way up into the leaves. Uh, the water runs up through the xylem. It's also another type of vein. You can probably see it there on the diagram. This red bit as uh, the other sort of half of the vein there. This carries the food that is created. So that glucose that gets created. The food is glucose that gets created. And that travels up in the phloem, which is these uh, this other vein. Now these are two very strange words. Xylem and phloem are weird weird words and it can often be quite difficult to remember which one transports which. So the way that I like to remember which one transports which, um, the phloem carries the food from photosynthesis. So lots of f sounds when you're thinking about phloem. So if you're thinking well which one's which, just think of the words phloem starts with a f sound and it carries the food from photosynthesis. So all those f noises are associated with the phloem. That's the best way I think to remember that. So a quick recap then. Um, we've got a way in and out of the leaf for all the reactants and products of photosynthesis. We've got the carbon dioxide entering 
via the stomata into the air spaces, and we've got the water being delivered via the xylem. We've got the oxygen gas uh, leaving also via the air spaces and the stomata, and we've got the glucose leaving the leaf via the phloem. So that's that so far. We've got our spongy layer. The thing we're missing so far though, we haven't yet talked about light energy. We know that light energy is something to do with photosynthesis, and we haven't talked about where the photosynthesis is actually taking place. Now we've got a couple of question marks on our diagram, so maybe that's going to be where we're going to put them. So it takes place in cells that contain a particular chemical. What is the chemical? This is a question that people sometimes get wrong. They get confused and they don't answer this question right. What is the name of the chemical where photosynthesis takes place? The chemical is called chlorophyll. Some people will probably have said chloroplast at that point, but the chemical itself is called chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is the chemical that is found inside chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are the organelles where the photosynthesis takes place. So the organelles are the little bits inside a cell. Um, they're, they're like the organs of a cell. The L bit means small, so the small organs inside a cell, the things inside a cell. The chloroplasts are those, and they contain the chlorophyll, which is the chemical that absorbs the sunlight, allowing photosynthesis to happen. Now you find a lot of cells containing lots of chloroplasts towards the top of the leaf, and those cells are called, what are they called? called? Palisade cells. That's pronounced like someone who helps people out where the queen lives, a palace aid. Palisade cells. And they're found in what's known as the palisade layer. So that's it. That's the last bit that we've got there. Uh, now we've labeled up the entire uh, cross section of a leaf. We know what each of the bits are for. Each of them has a role. One thing we don't have labeled on here is the top layer top layer of a leaf is often known as the waxy layer so a layer of sort of waxy substance that goes along the top this helps to keep the leaf uh, nice and protected stops it from sort of flopping too badly but also helps to stop um, also helps to stop water from evaporating from the cells up there at the top so that's it that's what we have for the parts of a leaf now we need to know why a leaf is good at its job to carry out photosynthesis it's going to need carbon dioxide, water, and light energy. Uh, the more you can get of those things, the more photosynthesis, generally speaking, you can do. Now, this is a question. It's the kind of question that you might be asked in, a, in an exam. How are leaves adapted to their function to help plants carry out photosynthesis? Now, this is a fancy pants way of saying, uh, why are leaves good at their job? So when you are asked anything like, how is something adapted to its function? Essentially, what you're being asked is, why is this thing good at doing what it does. And in this case, we're being asked, why are leaves good at doing photosynthesis? And there are six things really we need to talk about when talking about why leaves are good at photosynthesis. What if you can get any of them? Six things are, they're broad, they're very wide, they're thin, they contain a lot of chlorophyll, they have these vessels, these veins that run through them, xylem and phloem, They've got these air spaces, and they've got guard cells. So let's talk about what those things are. The broad bit, what we mean by that is they have a large or a big surface area, and that means that there's a lot of area for the light to fall on. The more sunlight they can get, the more energy they get for doing photosynthesis. So the broader they are, the more photosynthesis they can do. The reason why we uh, need to have thin leaves is it gives a very short distance for the gases to diffuse in and out of that spongy layer. The thicker they are, the further the gases have to go. So that's not a good thing. So that's why leaves have evolved to be thin. They contain a lot of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the uh, chemical that allows plants to absorb light energy. So uh, plants have uh, evolved to have a lot of chloroplasts, which are those organelles that contain the chlorophyll uh, towards their top layer, uh, meaning they can absorb a lot of light energy. Those vessels, the xylem and the phloem, that bring the water from the roots, in the case of the xylem, and take the food, the glucose, to the rest of the plant, in the case of the phloem, they've got those in there as well. Those air spaces and the stomata, the holes that allow the air, the uh, CO2 and the oxygen to get in and out respectively, those are adaptations of uh, a leaf to make it good at its job. And they also have the guard cells, and the guard cells can open or close to stop gases from getting in or out. They also stop water vapour from escaping. If we uh, can stop water vapour from escaping, it stops the plant from drying out. Generally speaking, the guard cells will be open during the day and they'll be closed at night. 
And the reason they're open during the day is that that's when the photosynthesis is happening. So they want the carbon dioxide to get in, they want the oxygen to get out. We also get a little bit of water evaporating through the stomata there, uh, which helps to draw that water up from the roots in a process called transpiration. But at nighttime, there is no photosynthesis happening and we don't want the plant to dry out. So the guard cells will close up to stop those uh, stomata from allowing the water to evaporate. And also we don't need any CO2 going in, we don't need any oxygen going out. So it stops that from happening. So those are six adaptations for uh, a leaf to make it good at its job. Quick recap then on everything that we've looked at so far. The word equation for photosynthesis, carbon dioxide plus water becomes glucose plus oxygen. We need to put light energy in there. And remember to use the arrow rather than an equal sign. And it's a good idea to say becomes so uh, carbon dioxide and water becomes glucose and oxygen. We've got a whole bunch of adaptations that leaves have for photosynthesis. They're broad, giving them a big surface area to take in a lot of light. They're thin, meaning a very short pathway for the gases to diffuse out. They contain a lot of that chemical chlorophyll in their chloroplasts, meaning they can absorb a lot of sunlight. They have those veins, those vessels, the xylem in the phloem, bringing water in the case of the xylem and taking away the glucose, the food in the case of the, pho uh, the phloem. Remember those? F sounds for phloem. Phloem take food from photosynthesis. Air spaces giving it a lot of surface area to uh, diffuse the uh, gases, carbon dioxide and oxygen in and out. And those guard cells and the guard cells will uh, close up at night time to stop water from escaping and when they don't need to be taking in any carbon dioxide or letting out any oxygen. We've also got our diagram that we looked at. Let's start from the top and work our way around clockwise. We've got these cells in the uh, spongy layer. Remember, they've got a big surface area to maximize the amount of gases that can, uh, the volume of gases that can diffuse in and out. The xylem, which carries the water up from the roots. The phloem, which takes the food away from photosynthesis. The guard cells, which can close up at night to uh, stop carbon dioxide from getting in, oxygen from getting out, and to stop too much water from evaporating and drying out the plant. The stomata those holes that let the gases in and out. The air spaces, which is where the gases can diffuse in and out of the, uh, of the cells. The spongy layer, which is the one that really feels like a sponge. If you were to squeeze it, it would feel like a sponge that you use for doing the dishes. The palisade layer, the palisade layer contains the palisade cells, which is the name for the cells that contain a lot of chloroplasts. And here are the chloroplasts towards the top layer of the, uh, towards the top of the leaf there. So that's it. Photosynthesis and the structure of a leaf. Thank you very much.